Hey, it's Leighton here for the New Heights Adventure Vlog. So today, we're not really doing an adventure, but we're here with Pastor John Boston, and his stories are pretty awesome, so it's going to be an adventure to listen to his stories, so, um, yeah. John, tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is John T. Boston II, and I was born in South Florida, right near the Florida Everglades, so I grew up in an amazing place, uh, almost as amazing as Australia and where I live now with my wife and my daughter. And I want to tell you a little bit about some things that happened in my life that make my life an adventure. One thing that really changed things for me was in 2015, I was in a near fatal car accident and uh, we had about 40,000 volts of electricity running through the car, a transformer fell down onto the car after I hit a pole, a power pole. And I couldn't get out on my own. I was watching the car literally melt all around me. I remember uh, because my adrenaline was pumping so fast, the things seemed to slow down. And there was a drop of melted glass that hit the dashboard and melted through. Then it melted through the floorboard. And I could see the ground. And I remember looking over to my right. And I saw the passenger window folding into the car like a piece of paper blowing in the wind, and I realized, okay, I'm not going to get out of this. And just when I realized that this guy just shows up out of nowhere, opens the door that I couldn't open, uh, gets me out of the seatbelt that I couldn't get out of on my own, we got about 30 yards from the car, and he looks me in my eyes, and he says, listen, you're going to be okay. And he says, what's your name? I said, it's John. He says, well, my name is Johnny. And he tells me that he can't be there when the police get there and he leaves and when I turn around the car is completely engulfed in flames the rubber is melting like water on the street the asphalt the pavement from the road is literally melting away there's no paint on the car and I was trapped in this thing <clears throat> I was covered by news agencies all over the United States people search for Johnny that was his name and Went into the hospital and uh, went in as a trauma two patient. Came out uh, a day later, two days later, and uh, ended up having a traumatic brain injury that wasn't we weren't aware of at the time. Went through about nine months of physical therapy, vestibular therapy for balance. Uh, had some occupational therapy. Had to learn how to put put sentences back together again. And it, it changed my life. But one thing that was significant about it. From that accident, I decided that I am not interested in doing anything in life that's not going to make a difference. So John, tell us what's your most epic adventure you've ever been on? Um, one beautiful thing that happened after that accident, as I started living and, and, and I realized somebody had to get me out of that situation. Somebody, an angel or that, that, that person that just wasn't going to be hurt by thousands of volts of electricity, however you want to look at that, I want it to be that for someone else. And, and so as we began to serve the mayor of the city, they were putting together this task force for President Obama uh, for the My Brother's Keeper initiative, for the, for the mentoring. It's a na nationwide effort. And he saw this news uh, clip and he said if, if God saved him, it's clear that God is on that, that guy's side. And I want him to be on our team. And so they, they called me to be a part of that task force. And from there, I got the call to go to the Syrian border. Uh, from there, I got the call to work with the, travel with the Secretary of Defense with the Joint Civilian Orientation Conference. I got the call to go to Australia. In 2017, when I got to travel with the Department of Defense and the Joint Civilian Orientation Conference, the 87th class, it's the it's a prestigious program. It's the only outreach program in the Department of Defense. And you know, the United States has this massive military. In that one week, in just seven days, we went to six military installations. We got to, I got to get on a ballistic nuclear submarine. I got to touch Tomahawk missiles. I, I, um, we flew in an Osprey. We got to rappel down a 50 foot wall, uh, for where the, where the army trains. We, got to fly in a Chinook and uh, it was just absolutely amazing. I, there's some things I can't even tell you about what we were able to do, but that was probably the most epic adventure of my life. We, we, it was just phenomenal to, to be able to experience all of those things. 
And so that would have to be it, the traveling with the Department of Defense in 2017. So John, tell us, what's your number one passion in life? Oh, Lady, my the, the thing that drives me is I want my daughter, Riley, uh, to be amazed at the work that I do. I want my wife to be amazed at the work I do. So the number one passion I have in life is going after impossible things, dealing with scenarios that are that seem impossible and making a difference in people's lives in impossible ways. And uh, I'm a Christian, so I have, I have a faith that drives me to do that. And my, my faith says that with, with our own strength, things are impossible. But in God's strength, it's impossible. And so I try to do things that I couldn't do on my own. Martin Luther King Jr., Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, he once said that God gives every man a small portion of his vision for humanity. And it'll take your entire lifetime to try to fulfill that. And we all have a part to play in that. So I want to play a part where I, I'm making a major difference. And that drives me to know that my daughter says, wow, or my wife says, wow, because I'm out there making a difference in other people's lives. Awesome. So John, tell us, what's your connection to youth work? Currently, in my role here in the north part of New South Wales, I work with schools, about 10 different schools, and I work to nurture the value systems that those schools have beyond what happens in the school, in the home, with the family, and, and, and that's my connection to youth work right now. So John, in the States, you've done some, some mentoring as well. Can you tell us a bit about that? Sure. We, when I was in Columbus, Ohio, it's in the Midwestern part of the United States, and I was the faith leader representing the My Brother's Keeper Task Force for President Barack Obama's uh, mentor initiative, My Brother's Keeper, or MBK. And that, that, it was a team of us, and we were looking for pathways to reach young people that were opportunity youth or at-risk young people. And so a mentor, and we, we, we were able to take a journey with people. I was there for three years in that, in that role, and I remember one young man in particular, Nigel, and he came from a very difficult home. His family had nothing to do with faith, and uh, I was a, a minister, I was a pastor, but my work didn't consist of only working with children that came to church. I worked with every, every young person that we could work with, and so, I also worked with, I was a chaplain for the Columbus Division of Police. And so in that capacity, looking at Nigel, I remember when Nigel first came to us, he came because, and I'm using a different name for his anonymity, but Nigel came because we were providing breakfast on two days a week. He went from the breakfast, he went on to a youth mentor program that we worked with, uh, an organization called the Urban League. And we began to see Nigel transform. And Nigel, when I met him, he was in the year 10. Now he's a sophomore or a second year student in college, first in his entire family, absolutely transformed him and, and his entire family. His parents, his father went on, to, he's working to try to get his general education diploma and his mother is taking on a more responsible job. And so that, that mentoring that young man made a difference in his whole family. And that's really an important part of what anchors me. And it reminds me that mentoring young people is an invaluable part of making a difference in the society that we serve and live in. Hey, John, so tell us, um, you do lots of awesome stuff, but I'm sure you've made a few mistakes along the way. Um, can you tell us a story of one bad moment or mistake that you've made? Well, I had some big wins in, in mentoring and uh, working with young people and, and people just trying to find their way. But I think there's, there's this one thing that kind of, it, it, it's a cloud always in the, in the sky of my life experience. And that's my nephew. My nephew is um, an amazing young guy. He's uh, gonna graduate in, in a year. And when he moved from Florida to Tennessee, I, I never, got to stay connected with him like I wanted to. And one thing that's haunted me about that is uh, the thought that I'm working with dozens and hundreds of young people and working on changes in mentoring and education for thousands and hundreds of thousands of young people. And just thinking, this is my nephew, this is somebody really close to me, and I'm doing all of this work for all of these other people and I haven't really been there for him and so before I moved to Australia six months ago 
our whole family got together just to say goodbye before we left Australia. And I got to connect with him again. And, uh, and I had to apologize and I, and I had to cry. And I said, listen, I know you see your uncle doing all of these things and, and, uh, and I wasn't there for you like I should have been. But I want to be there for you and I want to be able to reach out to you and connect with you. And so I'm playing catch up now, but that's been the biggest mistake of my mentoring experience, not taking care of those in my family while I'm working so hard for everyone else out of my family. So John, have you got any parting advice for anyone watching? What awakened in me after that accident, after almost losing my life and, and, and being right there at death's door, being in a car that's completely consumed in, in electricity and fire, being there from that moment, I realized, being saved from that, that life is not about uh, how you plan for retirement. It's about how you live right now. Do the planning for retirement, but make a difference in somebody's life. Mentor somebody. Go out and take a walk with somebody. Do something amazing that's not for you, but the most amazing thing you can do is to do something uh, that, that changes somebody else's life. And so really appreciate this opportunity to sit with you lately. And this, this blog I know is going to be absolutely amazing as the years roll on. And I have, I've seen 13 of them. So I didn't realize I was missing seven. So I'm going to go back and find them. And uh, there's other ones aren't out yet. Okay. The other ones aren't out yet. Okay, that's, that's, okay. <laughs> I was like, I've seen, I've seen most of them, but I, but I, I uh, so really grateful for this. And, and I, I know that it's going to be amazing. And if you're watching, I want to encourage you find a way to, to support what Layton is doing, but also find a way to get out there and say, uh, you know, life is an adventure and, and how can I help somebody live their best life? So it's amazing, amazing thing to do. Awesome. Well, thanks, John, for sitting down and having a little chat. Yeah, it's been fun, and I'm glad you um, enjoyed the walk through the garden and it was amazing. checking out my snake collection up there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, thanks again. Sure thing. So, see you guys next time.